The wife came up to me some time ago and said, we need a bunch of these doorknobs. Now, our house was built back in the 30s, so this is not something you're going to run to Home Depot and pick up. I said, well, it's no big deal. I can have them made. So I took one of these as a master, and I sent them out. I had waxes made, and I sent them out, and voila, we have a box of these of about 30. And this is what they look like. And I don't know if, if you're familiar with machining bronze or brass or not, but it's not easy. Bronze can be very, very difficult. So the objective here is to machine the boss, drill a hole in here, tap it with a special tap, by the way, and then drill and tap a couple of holes 90 degrees in, in this area so you can lock the uh, shaft on it. What we're going to do is take them in the back. We're going to run them on a lathe. We're going to take the first part of it, that is to do the machining on a lathe. Uh, eventually, we're going to be doing it on a bridge port and be drilling the two holes 90 degrees to one another for, for like something like a 1032 tap. And then we'll send these out and have them polished, uh, burnished first actually, and then polished after that. And hopefully, we'll end up with something like this. This was the original knob. So let's go out back and get it done. Back here on the lathe, we are removing the standard jaws, which are hardened. And the reason we're removing them is we want to put soft jaws in there. So we will hopefully do less damage to the bronze knob. Blowing it off with a little bit of air. And uh, you can see here jaw number one. We have to match it up with jaw number one, space number one on the chuck. The jaws are made specifically to go into a particular location. You can't just take any jaw and drop it any place because of the way the scroll works. So here we are tightening up the, the uh, and I put a little pressure on it with a wrench. And right now we're putting our knob in there and getting a rough idea what it looks like. And we'll tap it around a bit to see if it's uh, uh, kind of concentric. We got it close enough now we can put an indicator on it. We can tap it with that. And I'm not really sure about how much pressure to put on these soft jaws before I'm going to damage uh, the bronze itself. So I'm trying to be cautious here. And I'm a little uncomfortable with the amount of cutting that I can take. So the first couple of cuts we're going to take, I'm taking it easy. And we've got to bring the diameter down to size. Now we have, uh, we have a, a couple of different issues here. One of them is I want to make sure that the cutting tool itself is on center. So I stopped there and I moved it a little bit to put it on center. Now we're taking another cut. And I'm not really comfortable with the way that the chip is looking, but uh, I think we can make it work right now. So we're going to keep on trucking. And uh, I'm going to take the mic out here and give it a check, compare it to the existing knob, or the original knob rather. And then we'll move in and take it all the way up to the shoulder and see if we can't bring it into size at the same time. And as you can see, I backed off a little bit because again, I don't want to throw the knob. It's very, very delicate. And there's a fine line between, gosh, do we take a big cut and risk throwing the part or do we take a light cut? And then again, it's, it's kind of a feel back and forth. There's, here's our fourth cut, and we're just not quite sure. I'm not real comfortable right now because I don't want to throw the part. At the same time, I don't want to waste a lot of time taking 10 or 15 thousandths at a time. So I'm checking it here again, and it looks like I'm okay with what we have. So now we can take our a cut all the way up to the shoulder and I like that shot right there where we can show it nice and clean. The shoulder's nice and clean. And remember, folks, this is not a critical dimension. It needs to be within five thousandths or so. So it's not real critical. And here I'm trying to show about, oh, maybe a three sixteenths of an inch or a quarter of an inch is all I need for uh, uh, for a land there. So now we're going to, oops, there you go. Well, so. I said, you know, I got an idea. Let's try this. How about if we put some double-sided uh, tape on the jaws and we'll get some 120 sandpaper and put that on there. Now the thinking there is that the sandpaper will help to bite it and will work better than the jaws themselves. So now we've got to go back and re-indicate it. And I'm okay with that, but 
I felt really good about when I was tightening it down. I, I felt this firmness, and I'm getting a little more confidence in it by using the sandpaper. I don't think we're going to damage it, and at the same time, I think we'll get a better grip on it. Now we're going to take the center drill and run the center drill in, and as soon as we uh, finish that, we're going to change over and put in our P drill. This is a, the Alpha Drill P, which is what's used for this particular tap that we're using. Remember that this tap is a British, it's a British dimension, it's uh, 3 8 by 20. So here we are drilling it, and it looks pretty good. I sped it up a little bit because it seemed like we, uh, we uh, were comfortable with what we're doing and holding it okay. And now, I want to make sure that the depth is okay, so I checked it with the old one, put a piece of tape on there, and that kind of gave us an idea. I just grabbed a piece of tape that we had left over from that double-sided tape, so it's not on there very good, but I didn't care. I just wanted to get a rough idea. Now, if I was going to run all 30 or 40 of them, I'd be a little more cautious about that. I'd probably put another piece of tape on there that, that would stay a little better, but to do a second knob, I'm good with it. So I'm just being careful here. And I like the chips. The chips are good, and we're not generating too much heat, so that's a good thing. And now we're going to put the tap in and tap it uh, by running a lathe. And it looked pretty good there, and I'm tapping it dry at this point because I thought that that's kind of the, the way to do bronze. I read both. Now here it's moving on me, and that's not good for the Jacob's Chuck, and it's not good for the tap. So I stopped it here and tried to tighten it up a little bit because it's just not working. And I put a lot of pressure on it and I still couldn't get it any tighter than I, than I could right there. And now I'm feeding in here by letting the tailstock float. And it seems to be, not, there it's turning again on us, darn it. And I had to struggle with this thing back and forth. And we're almost to the depth that we need and this darn thing just kept, and it's, again, that's just not good for the chuck jaws, and it's not good for the tap, but mainly the chuck jaws. Now here it's spinning on the tailstock itself. That's really not good. So we had to prevent, stop that, prevent that from happening anymore, because we're going to damage the taper inside the tailstock. So that was a real challenge, tapping that. And what I didn't know at the time was that tap was pretty dull. And I felt it with my fingers, and it sure did feel okay. So we're cleaning it out here and I'm good with it. So now we're changing, we're gonna do number two. We didn't bother showing you how we clamped it and indicated it because you already saw how we did that. But in this case, I clamped it down a lot tighter because I noticed we did not damage the, the brass knob with the soft jaws and the sandpaper. So now we're just giving it a, a quick check to see if we're okay. And I'm looking pretty good there. So we're going to take it back to our size, finish up the shoulder, and one more time we're going to start facing it off, and we're going to take it back to our depth that we want, which is right there. And again, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it. We're holding it pretty well. Up, oh, and there you go. You just don't know. So now we've got to re-indicate it, start over. And again, I didn't damage the brass, so we put the indicator on it. And I tightened it down a little more than I did the last time. So now I'm getting a little more confidence in tightening the chuck down and not worrying about damaging the brass. And that's a fine line there. So this is a learning experience going through this. Uh, when you're going to do 30 of them, you sure as heck don't want to spend a lot of time uh, machining and taking two or three or five or ten thousandths at a time if you don't have to. And again, I made sure that the tool bit was on center and I was again feeling a little more comfortable. And there we go. Now we got that. Now I'm going to go in there and just face off the edge. Perfect. Just touch it up with a file and get rid of that little nib. And we're good to go. And now we're going to go ahead and center drill and drill and tap this guy. So the center drill went nice and easy. Here goes our drill. Remember, this is our P drill. And look at the chip this time. I'm feeling pretty good about uh, the grip that we have on the part. Checking the depth there. It's a little deeper than the original one, which is fine. I didn't come out the back end. Now we're back in tapping it again, and we're really struggling here. So I decided maybe 
The thing to do was to be to tap it by with a hand wrench and rather than trying to fight with all that other look at the look at what's going on there I mean I am really putting a lot of pressure on this thing and again I'm not sure if it's a tap or if it's a material but I had a heck of a time getting this thing on and off it was really a challenge so what we learn by this is that when you're feeling the edge of a tap and you think it's sharp, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's sharp. The next time that we run this job, I'm going to make sure that we have brand new taps, three or four of them sitting around, so we don't have to worry about struggling with the tapping. That was the hardest part. And again, we learned about how to hold the part so it doesn't turn on us. That's what we learned in this exercise. Well, that was interesting back there. The challenges were uh, significant. Three stages. As you can see, this is the original casting, untouched. Once we machined it, we ran it through a burnishing machine or a vibrator as it's called. That tended to take away a lot of the nicks that were on there from the original casting and kind of smoothen it out. And from there, we were able to take it over to the, the buffer and put a nice shine on it. So that's how we were able to do that without any difficulty. And it came out, really came out pretty good. We did not spend a lot of time on the buffer. To turn the diameter, and to hold it to this size is not a big deal. It, it can be within 10 thousandths. It doesn't make any difference. But as you could see, we were struggling back there with the tap. That was not easy. The drilling was fine, and holding it was a, was a bit of a problem. You may recall that in, in order to hold this and without damaging it, I put soft jaws in there, which will prevent from uh, somewhat prevent the damaging of the surface. The problem was if you clamp it too tight, you're still going to damage it even with a soft jaw. And then it started moving on us and that just wasn't good. So I got the idea of putting sandpaper with double sided tape on the jaws. That really, really worked well. That made a huge difference in gripping it. And you could feel the, the cushiness when you're tightening it down because that double sided tape is, has a little bit of a foam in it. So it's got a little bit of a give. So between the sandpaper on it, which didn't damage anything, and the foam, I felt we had a nice safe grip. It was a little, a little scary a couple times. That's how we solved the problem of grabbing it. The real issue we had was tapping the, the hole, which was an absolute challenge. What I didn't know, and everybody said bronze is very difficult to tap. What I didn't know was that that tap, although it felt sharp, what a lesson there, guys. That tap felt perfectly sharp to me. Well, it wasn't, and that's why it was so difficult to get the tap in and to get it out. You saw how I struggled with it. That was a son of a gun. So I got some new taps. And by the way, these are not standard taps. Uh, I, apparently doorknobs came out of, uh, originally they must have been made in England. And it's a 3 8 20 thread. So not 3 8 18, but 3 8 20, which is a bastard size. So anytime you're gonna be cleaning out or tapping for doorknobs, keep in mind it's a special tap. And we were able to get some new taps, so we go back there and, and we start running the final knobs. I think there's 30 of them we're going to run. This will make a big difference in the tapping. So that's a lesson that we learned, and I hope you learned from it as well. And thanks for watching. Keep an eye on us on, on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, send us your comments. Love to hear them. So thanks for watching.